Hi and welcome to Computer Hardware. This is Chapter 7 on Understanding and Installing Hard Drives. Our objectives for uh, this chapter are to, are to understand the purpose uh, of permanent storage, aka hard drives, understand the different types of hard drives, understand the technology of hard drives, understand how to select a hard drive, and finally understand how to install a hard drive on our new system. So we're going to start out with number one, which is the purpose of the hard drive. We talked about this back in uh, chapter one as well, but let's go over those things that we know about hard drives. Number one, we know that a hard drive is permanent storage. Uh, our uh, storage that we just talked about in chapter six, our memory was temporary storage. It was that storage that was primary to the CPU. This is not primary, it's permanent in that it's there until something happens to it. In other words, we delete it, or there's a catastrophic failure, but we'll consider permanent as always there. So uh, with the hard drive, uh, we're talking about that permanent storage. And like I just said, it's also considered secondary storage to the CPU. CPU never talks to the hard drive, if we remember that back from chapter one, the CPU talks to memory, the memory controller will write stuff to the hard drive in uh, a wait state for when the CPU needs that information or data again. That information is always loaded to memory for the CPU to access. So hard drives are permanent and they're secondary uh, to our CPU. It holds the most important thing on our computer, which is our operating system. We know from chapter two that our operating system is what gives us control and access to our hardware. So without an operating system, we just have a big, huge, heavy uh, uh, paperweight. But with our operating system, we have access to all of our hardware. So the, the first and most important thing that our hard drive does is it holds our operating system. We also know from chapter two that BIOS goes to the hard drive or other permanent storage to look for the operating system and hand off control from the BIOS uh, initial program loading, that basic input output system and hands over control of the hardware to the operating system. So it holds the operating system uh, and I've already said that's the most important program we have. It also holds all other applications. It holds Microsoft Word, it holds Chrome, it holds Firefox, it holds all the games that we have. All those programs that we start are held on some form of permanent storage somewhere in our system. So that's uh, the objective of the hard drive is to hold our data. It's our permanent storage, it holds the operating system, holds our other program like Games, Word, Chrome, uh, and then it also holds all of our other user data that we might save, whether pictures, music, homework, uh, video files, um, all those things are stored on permanent storage so they don't go away when we reboot our machine. So the first objective is a hard drive, uh, is to hold that data. That's our primary purpose is for it to be our permanent storage on our device. Pretty easy objective number one complete. Objective number two is to understand the types of hard drives out there and we're going to talk about these five things when we talk about types of hard drives. Number one, physical size and shape. We're going to look at basically there's three different physical sizes and shapes and when we talk about those three we're talking about hard drives. There's lots of shapes and sizes of flash drives which are also permanent storage but not the permanent storage we're really talking about today. Uh, we're going to talk about the capacity or how much each kind of hard drive is capable of holding. We're talking about the different speeds of hard drives, uh, the different ways they connect to our computer, and finally about the longevity and reliability of different types of hard drives. Those all relate when it comes to our final thing of deciding which one to buy and then finally install to our computer. So when it comes to physical size, really there's three different physical sizes. The traditional hard drive shown here on the left uh, is a traditional spinny drive, magnetic drive that uh, is 3.5 inches wide. So when you look at drives and it says it's 3.5 inches, it's really talking about a standard sized hard drive that are in most computers for long term and durable storage. The next size down is two and a half inches, 
That can either be a magnetic spinning drive or it can be a solid state drive in the two and a half inch category. Uh, either one can be used in a PC or uh, in a laptop and that's really what the two and a half inch drive came about for originally was for laptops. But when solid states came out, they all came out initially in the two and a half inch size. We'll talk about why later, but they can still be used inside our desktops. All of the teachers here at National Trail have a two and a half inch solid state that all their programs are loaded onto. And another drive that's a spinny drive, and that could be a two and a half or a three and a half depending on their system. Uh, the final kind of drive is this smaller M.2 drive, which is 0.9 inches uh, wide. It actually took more space to type it than it did on the screen. An M.2 drive is very specific for our kind of motherboards and what kind of slots it can go into. Uh, but those are the three physical sizes of drives that we might be able to get for our PC or our laptop when we talk about physical size and shape. Uh, and here's just another slide that's a comparison of those sizes. This is the underneath of a three and a half inch spinny drive, a two and a half inch HDD or hard disk drive. That's how we refer to one that's magnetic and spinning. SDD is a solid state drive. It can be exactly the same size. And then the size of an M.2 if they're all laid right next to each other. So those are the physical sizes of hard drives. When we take a look at them and we go shopping, we need to know which physical size we're looking for. Okay, and when we get to the red slide, we know that means there's a formative assessment associated with this instructional material. So if you haven't already, it's time now to stop and go take a look at that and take that quick quiz before we move on to the next area.